Deep in the jungle of central Vietnam, there's a wonder of the world. Wow, that is amazing. A lost universe that hides a unique ecosystem. It doesn't happen anywhere else on this planet. I think that's just about the holy grail for a biologist. And a team of scientists and explorers with a mission. This is an amazing cave. Look at that. Absolutely staggering. To investigate a record-breaking contender for the world's biggest cave. Wow. <laughs> Vietnam's Mountain River Cave, or Han Song Dong, is uncharted territory. And next to no one has forged the depths of this monstrous cave. The team of pioneers is here to prove that this cave is the largest in the world. This is an absolutely amazing cave. It's huge. That We're just in the entrance now. It's going to get so much bigger. That's amazing. Absolutely wonderful. This is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm so excited about being here. Practically the first person to set foot into the cave. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. In 2009, caver Jonathan Sims was one of the first humans ever to enter here. But deep into the long cave passage, he was stopped short by a forbidding rock face. Now he's back with caving expert and expedition leader Howard Limbert. He brings more advanced climbing equipment and a commitment to reach the top of the wall. The expedition begins with a dangerous 328-foot rappel into the first massive cavern. British caver Howard Limbert has led 12 expeditions to Vietnam's limestone caves. This year's expedition into Mountain River Cave is especially dangerous because it's so remote. Anybody can fall, twist their ankle, break their ankle, that, that could happen. And if that happens, you know, then we've got a rescue on our hands. Rope free, Annette. German zoologist Annette Betcher is anxious to enter the unique underground world within. Scientific opportunity and a caving opportunity as well at the same time. It's fabulous. Daryl Granger is here to unravel the mysteries of Mountain River Cave. He's a world expert in cave geology. If this is the world's biggest cave, he wants to know how it grew to such record-breaking size. It's like no other cave I've ever been to. Southeast Asia is famous for its limestone geology, dating back 450 million years. Many large caves litter Vietnam, but here within Kaibang National Park, Mountain River Cave is certainly the giant among caves. In the 2009 expedition, Limbert and his team were only able to fully explore the first section of the cave. But they found areas they estimated to be about 500 feet wide and about 650 feet high. That's over three times the height of Niagara Falls. Deer Cave in Sarawak, Malaysia, currently holds the title World's Biggest Cave. From what they saw last time, Limbert's team is convinced this cave may be biggest. Let's try and get the map of the cave in some sort of order. Yeah, so to claim the world record, they need hard evidence. All this is unmeasured. That's why we've got to survey it, to find, you know, just how big it is, whether it is the biggest cave in the world. We've got to do a serious survey. This passage here for surveying, it was really, really hard work. It was Jonathan hard. Sims is one of the four cavers who drew up this rough original survey of Mountain River Cave. And what we really need to do next is get over this wall. He knows the wall that defeated him back in 2009 is their biggest challenge. It's a dangerous obstacle to overcome. Made of loose calcite and mud, it stands at nearly 50 feet high. We, we just weren't expecting anything like that. Well, as well as that. Sims is determined that this trip will be a success. He won't fail twice. They can climb this forbidding wall. He's convinced that the enormous cave continues on. And as a backup, there's this static sump which didn't look particularly okay. uh, potable. They estimate the wall is about three miles into the cave. 
from the 328-foot rappel at the entrance, it will take the team half a week to reach the final survey point at the Great Wall of Vietnam. After the initial drop, there's an 1,150-foot scramble leading to the first of two river crossings. From here, the team needs to climb high following the river through the natural valley of the cave. Then there's a descent down to a level sandy area and to the first of two dolines, collapsed holes in the cave's surface. The dolines and cave beyond are where Betcher hopes to find new life forms and Granger, the secret of how the cave was formed. Then, through a narrow section, across the larger Dolene, and into the second camp. So far, the final part of the cave surveyed is the last quarter mile before the Great Wall of Vietnam. And then, it's into the unknown. Limbert's caving team has been exploring Vietnam caves since 1990. They picked the Kebang Massif for a very good reason. It's a huge limestone area with lots of water, ideal ingredients for cave formation. Where there's no limestone, the rivers are trapped within walls of non-soluble rocks, which hold the water in. But when it does find an exit, the results can be spectacular. The volume and power of the water help create these gigantic caves. At a monsoon climate, with heavy downpours feeding the many rivers here, and the chances of water carving out a colossal cave are even greater. So far, they've discovered 62 miles of caves, but none as epic as this. They suspect additional factors must be at work here. The team needs to navigate difficult broken terrain to reach their first camp. They're nearly a third of a mile into the cave, with 65 feet to go before reaching a powerful river. This river runs like a main artery through the first part of the cave. At its lowest, 353 cubic feet of water pour by this point every second. It carved this enormous cave, and the team will have to navigate it twice. Limbert leads the way. Oh, some evidence of uh, a bit of water comes through here at times. A bit slippy on these. Yeah. Oh, I can see the river. Whoa! Look at this. This is our river crossing. Oh, then we're underwater. Yeah. Determined to move forward, they must cross the deep, threatening underground river. It's the last bit that looks a bit quick. So if I go up there and belay you, and then you can walk across there, and probably it looks like you've got to climb up in that crack there. A couple of bolts this side, a couple of bolts the other. It's life and death, really. So, I mean, it has to be right. Worst case scenario, one of these pops, you've got to back up. That's why you've got to put, you know, as, uh, make it as safe as possible, really. In full flow, the river could sweep any one of the cavers off their feet. And if it floods, it could rise to life-threatening heights, cutting off their escape route. What's the forecast for the next few days? Well, the forecast is good, but you can never be absolutely confident. Limbert chose the timing of the expedition very carefully. It's the end of the dry season, so the river is low. But any unexpected tropical downpour could cause the river to rise dramatically in just hours. Let's do it. Right, guys, you can start crossing. Next one. The most important thing is that you, that you don't allow the river to sweep you away because there's a load of rapids just down there and we're not really quite sure exactly what's in the river beyond that because we haven't seen it all the way. And there could, be, there could be all sorts of very sharp rocks and all that kind of thing. 
And the last thing you want is to get swept down the river because it could be serious injury or even life-threatening. I'm, I'm actually quite nervous about river crossings because I'm a, quite a slight build and I've been in flooding caves before where when you put your hands on something, your legs just get swept away from underneath you and you can't get them back down on to get footing. It is actually really, really dangerous. I'll put a passive lock here. Hold on. A major obstacle conquered. Daryl Granger can now start to really look around. You can see big formations, big stalagmites over there. Check that one out. This is an amazing cave. We came down those big slopes, we've come through the rocks, and we finally made it down to river level. So now we can uh, set up camp here. We can start thinking about what we want to do next in this cave. The Titanic cave is theirs to explore. What is it that makes a cave so big? There's a lot of stories that we can learn from this cave. To claim the world record, Mountain River Cave needs to be consistently higher, wider, and longer than the current title holder, Deer Cave in Sarawak, Malaysia. When you're talking about largest caves in the world, there's no doubt there's some very, very long caves. And if you went on pure volume, many, many caves are bigger than this cave on pure volume. It's pure dimensions of a whole single passage like this that continues for five kilometers is pretty unique in the world. Mountain River Cave runs in an unusually straight line from north to south without any deviation. So let's get underway. Let's get started. OK? OK. Granger believes the water in the oldest section of the cave could offer an explanation as to why this cave is so enormous. Highly erosive, extremely acidic water rushing over pure limestone may be the answer. To confirm his theory, Granger needs to draw a sample. Okay, so right now I'm taking a pH measurement. I have a pH probe here. We have to leave it in the water for a little while to equilibrate. That'll tell us the, the pH of this water. pH levels range from 0 to 14. The lower the pH number, the stronger the acid. To be out of the ordinary, Granger is looking for a reading lower than 7, which is neutral. On the surface, tropical rainstorms flood the vegetation and seep down through the soil. Along the way, the water picks up carbon dioxide, which makes it acidic. High levels of acidity would make the water flowing into Mountain River Cave more effective at seeping its way through the rock. All right, so my pH should be uh, finished now, and we have about uh, pH 7.5. So that's pretty typical, maybe a little bit on the low side. The results of the test surprise Granger. The water here is not overly acidic. This can't be the explanation for the cave's epic size. There's something strange going on here, and finding the answer to this huge puzzle is his primary focus. Granger needs to dig deeper. The explanation could lie in the river's efficiency at eroding the limestone. To test this theory, he measures how much dissolved calcium carbonate there is in the water. This will tell him how much rock erodes daily. I'm going to add some acid in here until the liquid turns yellow. And then the way this kit works, I can just read off from the syringe how much calcite is in this water. One more drop. So now it's yellow. OK, we've got it. We only have about 62 milligrams per liter. This means that every 1,000 gallons of water that passes by here carries eight ounces of dissolved rock, about the size of a baseball each second. It sounds like a staggering amount, but for a cave of this size, it amounts to nothing. Like the pH level, the calcium carbonate result is ordinary and unexceptional. It's exactly the result a geologist might expect to find in any limestone cave river. 
These results don't help Granger understand why this cave is such a monster. The answers must lie deeper within the cave. Howard Limbert's team is a third of a mile into mountain.